Hello students, how are you? I hope you all are doing great at home. You're studying properly, you're healthy and fit enough, okay? My name is Mahesh. In the last class, I was discussing about reflection of light by plane mirrors. I hope you have watched that video. If not, please go back and watch it first and then come back to it because this is the second part of that same series, reflection of light by plane mirrors. I will slightly be mathematical in this class to prove certain relations regarding plane mirrors and how they form various kinds of images. All right. So always you're free to subscribe my new YouTube channel SMR Online Physics. If you like the videos, do put a like for it, do share it among your friends and do subscribe my channel. All right. Let's get on to today's class. In the last class I was discussing about reflection of light by plane mirrors. And we have completed this topic and plane mirrors big opaque mediums do reflect light extremely well to form virtual and erect images. There's a very well known property of plane mirrors. They always form virtual and erect images, but at the same time, they also give us something very beautiful illusion. They make my sides interchange. That is called lateral inversion. At the same time, if I'm getting closer to the plane mirror, you'll find that the image in the plane mirror also seems to be coming exactly closer. At the same time, if I'm moving away from the plane mirror, you'll find the image in the mirror also moves further away from us. At the same time, it's very special of the plane mirrors that the size of the object it always seems to be remaining the same as the size of the image or vice versa you can say that so we'd like to prove it in the first part of this class that the distance of the object from the mirror and the distance of the image from the mirror is exactly the same in case of a plane mirror let me show it to you slightly geometrically with the help of a very simple ray diagram so this is, uh, as many of you know, those who followed my classes properly, this is the symbolic representation of a plane mirror. Let us call it as M1, M2, as simple as that. Let us visualize a point source which is taken as an object O, which is at a certain distance from the plane mirror. So if the object is at this particular distance from the plane mirror, how to show the image formation? I think you know how to draw the ray diagram. In the last video, I was showing the image formation of a candle flame placed in front of a plane mirror. Now I take a very simpler thing. We take it as a point source object. You can just visualize few important rays of light like a ray of light incident on the plane mirror at 90 degrees to the surface, bounces back and retraces its path. That's perfect. You can choose any one more ray which is uh, incident on the plane mirror obliquely and it will definitely bounce off from the surface making equal angles with the normal. So these are the angles I'm talking about. This we call as angle of incidence, this is angle of reflection and both the angles are exactly the same. So where is the image forming of this point source object? This is the object you have in front of the mirror and you can clearly see that the reflected ray number one has bounced back along its same path and this is the reflected ray number two which is bouncing off in a very different direction so you, uh, you can easily see that it's very easy to imagine that these two rays are never going to intersect in real in the near future so the virtual image formation by ray diagrams is always shown by producing the reflected rays backwards. The reflected ray number one is produced backwards, the reflected ray number two is produced backwards, and when you do that, you'll definitely find that this reflected rays when produced backwards do have a very common meeting point. And this intersection point, which is not real, is actually the position of the image of this point source object. So let me call it as I. That's it. So I was talking about in this case, the distance of the object from the mirror, which we denote in physics for some very unknown reasons, 
by the alphabet small u and similarly the distance of the image from the mirror is denoted by small alphabet v so i mean to say that i'm asking you to literally prove geometrically that u is exactly equal to v the object distance is equal to image distance we can do it by a very simple geometrical process i hope some of you may know it if not let me help you how to get it very easily you can see that we can name these triangles let us call this point where it is coinciding with the mirror at m so we have this uh, names like o m i let me call this point as p if you observe it closely this angle formed is 90 degrees all right and you can clearly see that o m and this normal are parallel to each other if they are parallel to each other then this line o p will act as a transverse so according to the alternate angles this this is angle i then definitely this also has to be angle i if that is the case so if this is angle i and if this is angle 90 degrees then exactly we can say the other angle on the other side should be also equal to angle i because this is also 90 degrees so hence we can say hence uh, since angle mop is exactly equal to mip which is equals to angle i and angle omp should be equal to angle imp which is equal to 90 degrees thus we can safely say that triangle omp is a similar triangle to imp triangle imp that's it so in under this condition we can now safely say that so om should be equal to mi that is u should be equal to v or that is object distance should be equal to the image distance i hope I'm very crystal clear in my explanation how to prove it geometrically u equals to v in case someone is noting it down you can happily do that and do share it with your friends also please pause it and do it i hope i made you feel very comfortable with this very simple geometrical derivation of uh, proving that the object distance and the image distance of in a plane mirror is almost exactly the same okay now let us talk about some more details about plane mirrors and their variations next I'm going to talk about what would be the effect of rotation of the mirror effect of rotation of the mirror on the reflected ray of light on the reflected ray of light what would have uh, what would happen actually if i really rotate the mirror by a certain angle all right if i do that what will happen to the incident ray what will happen to the reflected ray let me talk about it so this is the plane mirror which i used in my last class also which uh, forms all these properties which I've been talking about. Now the question on the board is, if a ray of light is incident upon the plane mirror, it will bounce off into the same medium performing equal angles of incidence and reflection. Now what if, what if, if you please observe the video closely, what if I just rotate this mirror by a certain angle of theta and keeping the same direction of the incident ray, what would be the change in the angle created for the reflected ray that is what we want to exactly calculate let me just show it to you as simple as possible with the help of a nice ray diagram this is our principal 
uh, this, sorry, this is my plane mirror. Uh, let me call it as M1, M2. Is that good? Right. Now we all know that if a ray of light is incident obliquely upon this plane mirror at a certain angle, the plane mirror would make this light ray to bounce off from the surface, performing equal angles. Now all you need to do is make or mark your normal passing right through the point of incidence. All right. In this case, you'll find this is your angle I and this is your angle R. And there's no surprise, you all know that both the angles are exactly equal. Let us uh, name it quickly as P O R. So from this diagram, I can easily see that angle P O N, the N representing for the normal, is equals to angle N O R. And both the angles are exactly equal to angle of I because uh, by measurement both are exactly of the same value all right we can write that hence I can say angle the total angle P O R P O R should be exactly equal to the twice of angle I double the angle is that clear okay so let us call it as equation number one I think very very clear till here now the question is what will happen if I just rotate this mirror by a certain angle of theta so let me draw the new position of the mirror with this orange colored chalk paste and let us mark it and show the angle of rotation is given as theta I think it's very crystal clear visible to you all right if the mirror is rotated by an angle of theta, what would happen if I fix up the direction of the incident ray? So by what angle is the reflected ray going to change? So what I mean to say, the ray of light still comes in the same direction of PO. Now the mirror is tilted by an angle of theta. So definitely the normal should be always perpendicular to the surface. So let me draw you the new normal. Yeah, this is the normal. Let us call it as N dash. Observe it very closely. And from this normal, it is going to reflect off in a very different direction. Let us call this as R prime. I hope my direction is very clear. Do observe it closely. Now we can write from the diagram that now angle P O N prime should be equal to the original angle of theta plus the I okay I mean to say originally it was angle I now you have added up with angle of theta is that clear to all of you angle I plus the theta this is the extra thing which has gone by theta and n prime o r prime should be also equal to angle i plus angle theta by the laws of reflection thus the total angle if you want to see here angle p o r prime angle p o r prime should be equal to twice of angle i plus angle of theta let us call it as equation number two. All right. Now, I think we are clear till here. Right. So now I wanted the angle by which the reflected ray has actually rotated because of this effect of the mirror's rotation. So I want to find this question mark angle. So it uh, looks crystal clear. Hence, I can write P O R prime. P O R prime subtract it from P O R and hence from the subtraction you're going to get the leftover angle that is angle R O R prime am I clear all right so now let us see what we know about these angles angle P O R prime is twice of 
I plus theta minus angle P O R P O R is twice of I and that should be equal to angle R O R prime so I clearly see that 2i plus 2 theta minus 2i, I lose the 2i and I'm left with angle R O R prime is equals to twice of theta. It means that if you're rotating the mirror by an angle of theta, the reflected ray is going to rotate twice that angle. So the result is twice of theta. Please note it down if I could make you happy and clear about this concept, okay? Hope I was uh, clear in the previous derivation of the effect of rotation on, of the mirror on the reflected ray. Now I'm going to talk something more interesting about the plane mirrors. What if there are two plane mirrors which are inclined at a certain angle and an object stands in between these two mirrors? How many images we can see of this object because of these two plane mirrors reflecting the light? Okay, this is a very common part, a very common section in any science museum. If you have ever visited, there is a place called Mirror Maze. Okay. A combination of plane mirrors there's also a section a combination of plane mirrors and the spherical mirrors right right now we'll uh, note down this topic how to calculate the number of images found by two plane mirrors idea is very very simple if an object is placed between two plane mirrors inclined at a certain angle of theta, something like this. This is plane mirror one, for example, O M1, and this is plane mirror two, O M2, and they have been inclined or maintained at a certain angle of theta. What if the object is standing somewhere here? How many images will we possibly see if I tell you what is the theta? And also mind it, if this is your angle bisector and if the object is standing right on the angle bisector, how many images uh, possibly will be formed by these two mirrors, provided you know what is the angle of theta. Alright, the idea is very simple. If n is equals to 360 degrees by theta comes out to be an even number. You do some calculations and you get it as an even number. Then, mind it, the number of images formed will be always be given by 360 degrees by theta minus 1. So the number of images is going to be always an odd number of images which are by the two plane mirrors provided you know theta and the answer to this first part of the calculation comes out to be even number. Definitely uh, thinking about the next part. What if 360 degrees by theta does not come out to be an even number but rather it comes out to be an odd number. If it comes out as an odd number, please mind one more important point here and if the object if the object is on the angle bisector, something like uh, position B shown in the diagram. If the object is on the angle bisector, then the number of images formed, the number of images formed will be given by n equals 360 degrees by theta minus 1. All right? If it is an odd number and the object is standing on the angle bisector, then we have to go for 360 by theta minus 1. But you immediately ask me the next question. If n equals 360 degrees by theta is still an odd number and the object is not, not standing on angle bisector, then need not worry, the number of images will be continuing to be 360 degrees by theta. All right, I hope uh, I was clear enough in discussing this topic, how to calculate the number of images formed by plane mirrors 
when you know that these two plane mirrors are inclined at a certain angle of theta, it's very easy to see by using this calculation. If theta is equal to 60 degrees, how many images are formed by these two plane mirrors for a given object? The answer is 360 by 60 would have given me 6, and 6 is an even number. 6 minus 1, the number of images would have been 5. Exactly. What if the angle between these two is perpendicular to each other, 90 degrees? 365 by 90 is equal to 4. 4 is an even number, so the number of images formed will be 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. That's it, as simple as Now we can move forward with the other topic. Mazara, are you able to understand what I'm talking about, what I'm trying to explain? Are you feeling comfortable? Physics is always fun, boys and girls. Physics is always fun bit of math and a lot of good imagination you can really reap a lot of success in physics for sure all right now i'm going to ask you a very very simple but interesting question suppose there is a person who may be like a very standard height six feet tall he's like six feet tall if he is six feet tall then at what height a plane mirror should be kept so that he can see his full sized image and what should be the size of the plane mirror kept in front of him this is a plane mirror as tall as him do we need such a large plane mirror do we need a six foot tall plane mirror to see a full size image of a six foot tall person let us find out okay that is the question for today's topic now okay the height of the mirror required to see a full size image because this is one of the very special properties of plane mirrors we always say that plane mirrors form laterally inverted, virtually erect, same distance from the mirror of the, of the object and the image. At the same time, we also say the same height of the object and the same height of the image. So to really see a full size image of these objects, such a uh, huge object like six feet tall, how huge the mirror has to be really. Now let me really show you a very simple ray diagram for that very simple my dear student just follow it calmly okay now that is the case uh, let us see like this if these are the eyes of the person okay this is the body of the person all right this is how i can always draw human beings i don't know why and this is the feet of the person whatever the height is and if this is an equally tall sized plane mirror, let me find out how tall a plane mirror needed here. So let us call these points as H for head, and here we have this E for eyes because everything, every reflected light or refracted light, if it just gets into my eyes, then only my brain can form any sort of images. And this is the foot of the person. So, a ray of light, if it happens to go perpendicularly onto the mirror, without any doubt, is going to bounce back off. Nothing surprised about it. I'm talking about the plane mirror, all right. If it happens to intersect something like this, then it is going to reflect off and fall into the eyes of the person. And hence, he sees his own head, the top of his head. At the same time, for this person to see his full size image, if he is able to see his head right now, he should be also able to see his feet. So let us imagine a ray of light striking somewhere on the plane mirror obliquely. This is our normal. And hence, after reflection, the light ray happens to just pass into his eyes. Hence, he can see the foot as well as his head. So both the light rays finally terminating on his eyes. So let us just produce this normal here. Let us create a normal for this first ray of incidence. And if you say it is going to hit it perpendicularly without any surprises, it is going to bounce off. All right, let us not take too much of time right now. Let us create a geometrical figure out of this person right now. 
okay so if this is h this is e let me call this point as p i hope it is clearly visible to all of you and if this is e then let me say this is uh, like q and let me say this is like r out of it all right if you observe this diagram i've intentionally drawn the person so what it means is that finally you need this height you need this sized mirror this is the mirror which you actually wanted so let us name this as a b and let us name right at the bottom as c so this is actually the size of the mirror you actually want to see a full size image of this person so let us use a small bit of geometry to get the answer what should be a b equal to all right these are like 90 degrees angles you can clearly see about it these are the angles which are exactly equal to each other so definitely listen to me very closely if these two angles are exactly equal and if these two angles are forming 90 degrees to each other then i can safely say here from the diagram in both these triangles i can say that hp or pe should be exactly half of he i hope i'm very clear about it this and this should be half of that okay equation one similarly in the larger triangle you can see the same situation coming up these two angles being exactly equal these two angles being 90 degrees to each other so i can say eq okay i hope i'm not troubling you eq and qr let us call it as or we have given a name here f so qf should be equal to half of ef that's it it should be half of ef okay this should be equal to this and exactly that is the situation is that all right is that all right give me a thumbs up okay if you're feeling good about it all right focus on the diagram now since that is the condition i can say here from the diagram from the diagram we can say that a b should be equal to p q do you agree for that do you agree do you agree come on let me know that a b should be equal to p q what is exactly p q what is exactly p q you can see that it can be beautifully written as p q is a combination of p e plus e q p e plus e q now let us search about do we know anything about pe here we go pe is nothing but he by 2 plus eq anything i know about it yes exactly that is half of ef so, so do some simple mathematics 2 is common there he plus ef now look into the diagram he this is h this is e and this is a e to f oh i have taken the sum total of the height of the person so that is equals to hf by 2 which clearly says that height of the mirror should be exactly equal to height of the person divided by 2 so all you need to do is you need to get only the half the size of the person's height that should be the length of the mirror to see a full size image. This is a very, very important result, my dear students. Please focus on this derivation. I hope I have made it very clear. How high it should be above his feet. If you want to even know CB, CB from this diagram, you can clearly see that is equal to QF, and QF is nothing but EF by 2. EF by 2. So it means that it should be exactly equal to ef by 2 which is all right if this is ef and ef by 2 should be at a height of half the distance from his eye level all right half the distance from his eye level if this is the eye level e this is f ef by 2 that should be the height where the mirror should be kept so that a full-size image is formed of this 
person in the mirror. Oh, we're doing great about it. All right. Mazare, are you able to follow me? Are you able to follow my class? Yes. If so, never forget to like this video and share it among your friends for sure and subscribe to my channel too. All right, let's continue. Let's continue with the last possible very important topic for plane mirrors. And that's very interesting. Suppose if I am running and coming towards you at a certain speed of two meters per second, and if that is the plane mirror, at what speed is the image approaching me? Is it also coming at two meters per second? Or is it coming at double the speed? Or is it coming at a reduced speed? All right, let us find it out. The relationship, the relationship between the velocity of the object and the image very very simple idea is slightly above the required standard of your 10th class but it will be very easy let me make it comfortable for you to understand how to calculate this okay very simple observe this diagram if this is the plane mirror we are talking about and you are here you are here okay let us visualize you or me to be a point sized object you are here you are at a certain distance definitely you know that the distance of you from the mirror and the distance of the mirror from your image will be exactly the equal which we have proved in today's class right at the beginning let us say this is i for image all right so let us say let us uh, for our convenience choose this plane mirror as our y-axis anything like to the right let us choose it as the positive x-axis so this will be our origin O so this distance of the object from the plane mirror according to the signs of uh, coordinate axis I can call it as minus x naught x O you can say position of the object and since it is on the right hand side of this origin I will call this distance as plus x of i. That's it. So according to the laws of reflection and for the properties of the plane mirror, even if they are at rest or even if they are approaching towards each other, we can always use this relation x naught with negative sign should be always equal to x of i. Here, my dear student, is slightly up, okay, that uh, part of mathematics, we get it in 11th and 12th class, but if you want to learn, you can learn it right now. If I have to differentiate this, I'm talking about differentiation with respect to time in both sides. Differentiation of position with respect to time always gives us the velocity of the object. Hence, I get the velocity of the object to be equal to the velocity of the image. I'm talking purely about the x-axis on the y and the z-axis if you really want to see it will be constant because there is no change for this point size object this is the condition minus v0 is equals to vi or we could have also written this as something like this minus v0 with respect to m is equals to vi with respect to m here m in both the cases standing for mirror this is called what we again study slightly higher level is called a relative velocity of the object with respect to the mirror or relative velocity of the image with respect to the mirror i mean to say from the mirror's point of view what is the velocity of the object from the mirror's point of view what is the velocity of the image hope i am getting you clear so the formula right now we can say take this minus out and this always says v o m is always comfortably written as v o minus v m is equals to v i minus v m that's it that's it as simple as that so here you'll see that v o is the velocity of the object v m is the velocity of the mirror who knows if the mirror is actually moving towards the object itself 
in that complicated situation, you can always safely use this formulae. Vi will represent the velocity of the image approaching towards or away from the mirror, and Vm, as usual, is exactly the same velocity of the mirror. These all are respectively calculated with respect to the ground. I expect you to practice today's mathematical part of this plane mirrors from your reference books and textbooks and do practice the related numericals. I will be discussing about how to solve problems related to all this in one of my next upcoming videos. So always keep your spirits up, never let physics go out of your hands. Keep practicing, keep rocking, keep enjoying physics. Have fun. Yeah, don't forget to like the video if you really found that it was useful for your knowledge enhancement. Do share it among your friends and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye. See you once again in my next video. Have a great time, guys. Bye.